Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Get What Up podcast. Today we have, this is a challenging one for me, Jennifer Echegary. You nailed it. Oh my God. That's amazing. I can't even get Smith right sometimes. <laughs> You're your day. Echegary, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> oh. Yep. It's a mouthful. I know. <laughs> Think of spelling it, it gets worse. <laughs> what is, oh, I don't even, what, um, what nationality is that? Like, you know what? It's actually from the Basque region, which is kind of the middle of France and Spain. It's okay. like Echegaray, I think is where it kind of gets from. But I had to ask the same thing because I married into it and I, I said, where is this from? <laughs> yeah. How can I remember how to spell it? Make sure it's not part of any mob or anything going on over there and exactly. give her a pray. <laughs> exactly. What's the background here? Yeah. I'm going to need a whole family tree going on here before we get married. <laughs> right. Take that on. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a huge commitment right there. So that name. Yes. So, all right. So um, Jennifer's joining us. Jennifer, where are you joining us from? I am actually joining you from my cabin, uh, really close to um, a, a huge ski, ski hill in Canada called Mont Tremblant. It's in Quebec. Oh, so sweet. just outside Montreal. So outside of Montreal. So let me see here. Are you what central time? Yeah. Eastern standard time. Oh, you're Eastern. Oh, so it's five o'clock yep. there too. Okay. Yep. Yep. Right. I'm originally from Toronto. I'm just, uh, I'm out here gotcha. you know, escaping COVID things oh, totally <laughs> going on totally yeah. um so is it cold yeah it's it's I'd say it's more like it's pretty chilly the one thing though about this area is if they get a ton of snow like the amount of I had to shovel my car if that can give you any type of context you, mean you like have to shovel, shovel your car out no shovel off your of car. my car oh. <laughs> literally <laughs> shovel snow off of the, the windshield that's how much snow is on it and that was oh. two days worth. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So lots of snow. Do you ski? I do. Yes. My family and I are, are, are skiers and I'm trying to get my kids into it now. So we're, we try to go out there. I'd say every, every week or so the kids are in lessons now. So there you go. Downhill, right? Downhill. Okay. Yeah. But there's a lot of cross country out here too. A lot of people gotcha. um, do that. I enjoy it too. It's quite the workout so it is really quite the workout I will tell you so um I'm from Michigan I grew up in Michigan not quite as north as you um my family is originally from the UP so I could come through the UP to Canada to see you because I know how to escape the country if I ever do anything illegal and I have to get out I know how to to Canada (laughs) from through the UP so anybody listening, I can trail that I can blaze that trail for you. My fee is just very, very high. So just throwing but that it's out, out there. there. It's out there. It's out there. I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> exactly. But my fee is very, very high. So um I used to race. I was a downhill racer. Um oh. yeah. I race oh, well, I, my you. parents put me on skis at eight years old and I um started I had my first race at 18. At, I'm sorry, at eight, and I skied my whole life up through college. So um, I'm a big skier. Now I'm too old and shit breaks too easily. You fall. We're done for. (laughs) And it hurts. It hurts different. Yes. The next day and the next day. Yes. I don't bounce back like I (laughs) know. So, um, and then I moved to Ohio and they don't have heel, hills here. They like to claim they have hills, but they don't. They don't have anything. Uh, well, judging from where you grew up from, no, probably yes. not not quite the same. Not quite <laughs> the same. So I appreciate your, that you're a skier. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. That is awesome. Okay. So we totally went down a rabbit hole already. Um, but that's- <laughs> As women do. Exactly. That's what, <laughs> that's what we do. So- um, Jennifer, we normally start off by learning a little bit about your background and how you got where you're at and, and your journey and all that good jazz. So I guess we'll circle back around and start over. <laughs> <laughs> now where do I start? <laughs> and you don't have to go all the way to birth, maybe not even high school, just, you know. Sure. 
Sure, sure. So I guess um, I grew up actually out west, so um, in Calgary, Alberta, so in the Rockies and stuff. And I did school out there. I did a Bachelor of Commerce. So I was very excited to move out east into Toronto to kind of get into the finance mecca of the universe is kind of what they say. And and so at my early 20s, I moved out to Toronto and I got in working with um, one of the big five banks um, <clears throat> in Canada. And I started out there and it was a great corporate journey. Um, I learned a lot. I had a couple children throughout that event. What did you <laughs> do stage. for them? Um, so I worked, I was, a, I was an account manager. And then as I, I again, my, my interests were more into capital markets. So I started to kind of go into institutional equity and sales. And so I kind of got into a little bit with that. Um, and and then ironically, I, I had a child and then I was like, you know what, I think I could actually go into a different division. And I went into a different mutual fund company. And so within wealth management, my husband and I are both in wealth management. And so we kind of had that in common. <clears throat> and I, I kind of did that whole journey, I guess, through corporate life. I, it was a really good experience. I was young and, um, and after having my second child, I said, you know what, I think I want out maternity leave was kind of like freedom for me for <laughs> whatever the 10 months that I did and um, for a I, lot of I us it was <laughs> it, yeah the freedom of just being able to do what you want to do was really empowering and, and my but my brain was just not down to be as just a stay-at-home mom I, I I enjoyed it but um I just wanted to challenge myself a little bit so I took a little time off and I actually went to culinary school for uh, nine months that's random. Very random. Very <laughs> random. I thought, you know what? I spent how many years raising some kids? I kind of did something on my own. And through that journey, I met some really cool mentors because every restaurateur out there is a business owner just, and they are uh, quite the breed. And so as I started to kind of get into that journey, my, my brain just started to tick a little bit as to what I could do and how I could branch out and to be kind of an independent, um, which led me to <laughs> another very random uh, when I worked for a consulting company um, and we dealt a lot with procurement. And so in that, and I'll get to you how I got into tech from here. Um, <clears throat> there is a, there is a, there is a reason why I'm going here. Um, when I was, I was kind of a principal negotiator for contracts and we kind of negotiated the long, the long tail end of um, a variety of contracts for large fortune 500 companies. And my main uh, my main job or my, my sweet spot was actually negotiating tech contracts, surprisingly oh. enough. They were the most challenging, I would say, hands down. They, those guys are good negotiators. <laughs> but I, again, I, I talked to predominantly men. So it was a very um, intense environment with negotiation. But I, I learned a little bit about innovative technologies. And as I kind of negotiated more and more of these contracts and SaaS was just starting to become what SaaS was like, no one kind of knew what that was back how many years ago. It was just kind of coming into the, the mainframe. And um, I kind of got into conversational AI. I landed there and I was like, wow, this is super powerful. It's such a great way that businesses can speak to their consumers at scale. Um, and I kind of got into, um, you know, the natural language uh, processing, the NLP side. And I just learned kind of, you know, how, how this could help enterprises and then I actually one of the companies that I was negotiating with I said I want to work with you guys and so I uh, I kind of quit my consulting job and uh, went to work with them and I helped execute over 50 uh, different um, implementations of chatbots amongst different uh, variety of SMBs and enterprises and um, that's kind of how I kind of started in that industry into tech. It was a, quite the journey <laughs> to get here. <laughs> it, it's, it sounds like, a, let's go back to culinary for a minute. Did you learn how to make some great food? I did. You know what? I have a passion for cooking. So it was more of a complimentary to what I was already, uh, okay. what I already knew. Okay. But my, my husband said that was the best, I think he's like, that was the best $5,000 investment I think I could ever make. He said, like, he's like, if any husbands are out there just wanting, he's like, it's a great investment. <laughs> Your wife learns how to do everything. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner and dessert. Mm -hmm. Pastries were very cool. 
yeah. very, very cool. Okay. So the, the husband's happy because you're just cooking and that's, that's what makes him happy. So <laughs> you you you're cooking the bonus. Gets, yeah. He gets to experiment on the food that you make. Okay. So, all right. And now we're into tech. So what are we doing now? Yeah. So I, so as I was kind of helping, I guess I, I was working for this um, chatbot company, I started to realize like, you know, there's the guys who run these tech companies are all kind of predominantly developers and they were, you know, more or less discovered through hackathons and different kind of innovative recruitment programs. And I realized like they're so working within their business that they were having a difficulty um, actually <clears throat> with the procurement not like working with enterprises and that whole procurement side and actually getting in to um, large enterprises and not just doing one off a proof of concept, but actually expanding that across the enterprise. Like how can we grow that? So kind of be like an ex extended sales arm, so to speak. So are these and with startups? My, yeah. So I worked with okay. yeah, a few startups. Exactly. And yeah, I just kind of noticed that they had a tough time speaking the corporate language that I was comfortable speaking. Okay. Well, we all here on this call can, or this podcast can tell you that developers are on the introverted side of things. <laughs> <laughs> and I work with them all day long and they do have a hard time with the language outside of the artistic ability of coding. I, I, mm. Mm. you definitely mm -hmm. need somebody you need somebody to be that voice you do at uh, you do and I think being a female in that kind of I guess this was about four or five years ago it, like, I think I said I negotiate all contracts with men I don't think mm -hmm. I once spoke to a woman so that was also another angle for them it's like you know what? we should add another female to the team and I was kind of that front-facing person for them and I could speak the corporate lingo I learned enough through the technology that I could enough to be dangerous. And, you know, over the past five years, it's been such a great learning experience and seeing different use cases for conversational AI. Um, it's been a great journey. And so when I started the Chatsy group, it was to kind of develop a consulting agency because I recognized there needed a bit to be a bit of a middleman woman woman here because the tech <laughs> the tech guys are them and they run great businesses and they do a great job but then the corporate side of things they're also trying to understand like, they don't know a lot about these innovative technologies and then they talk to these tech people they don't feel comfortable <laughs> and their ability oh, it's to awkward it's awkward <laughs> right no <laughs> doubt about it I I hear you girl totally awkward it's awkward and then I, I knew enough to be dangerous in the procurement side of things and I'm like okay like that process is also a process right the RFI the RP and you go through the vendors and so you know with your background I know you're kind of in in um, in agile and scrum and so I, I that's a lot of our developers use so I kind of was like okay can we apply like an agile approach to the procurement side of things here like this is very like 20 years ago right like right six to eight months to find a vendor right like, it's the very technology old has school changed. Procurement. it is old school it is old school um and a lot of companies are are still stuck in that but they re it's it's I think from, I work with a lot of their, you know, direct managers um, from different departments and they say, oh, like we found a great vendor and now they have to go through procurement. It's going to take four months. Right. Right. And so I said, look, if you work with the chat, like our chatbot agency, I can, I can hopefully, you know, get these an approved vendor there. And then I can help you with connecting you to a variety of different vendors that I've already pre-vetted. I've worked with on different projects and I've kind of condensed that six month timeline, so to speak, to I can get you something in about a month after we kind of be going through kind of a lean agile procurement process. All right. So you took the, how can we do this better philosophy and you made it better. That's yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. You nailed it. <laughs> okay. So what, all right. So, um, have some questions like I'm trying to formulate the best way to say this in my head so you oh gosh so developers work very much especially startups in that agile right 
continuous delivery, relentless improvement, that kind of thing. So is that what triggered this innovative move forward on this process or was there like other driving factors? No, it, it was that. So it was actually a comment from one of, I was just, I was in a prospect meeting and one of the, the CTO of the company says to me, Jen, it's like the wild, wild west out there. He says, like, he's like, I just, it's wild. Like this is like, I've interviewed three chatbot companies from around the world. And I feel like I'm still at square one, right? Like I, I have, I don't know what to do. Like, this is, this is crazy. And I'm like, is it? And he's like, yeah, because I, I didn't really see it from his side. I was always kind of on the developer side. Right. And um, <clears throat> and that that in an instant, it shifted me, made me was like, okay, maybe I need to kind of partner more or less with the enterprises and help them identify the appropriate use case, kind of put together like an agile approach to the procurement and get the vendor that can do what they want to do and get a proof of concept going. And if, you know, if, if you know, from number one, if, if like the risks are reduced. So if we choose the right vendor, check one, does this vendor can do everything we need to do? And number two, um, is the conditions, like do the conditions match kind of what we need on the internal side of things? Um, yes, then we can kind of get things going. And I find the feedback that I've, I've kind of, as I talk to the executive teams or if I need to kind of hold any stakeholder meetings, they're always just so grateful that we didn't have to go through this huge arduous process. And I'm right. like, you're one thing, and they only talk about agile, like agile is such a, I find a 2021 buzzword, I like to call it. <laughs> like, oh. I know about you, I'm sure you, especially you have <laughs> um, seen this explode. <clears throat> it is an interesting, concept um it's funny how people take it right like yes. it's it's a mindset of how we do work and people tell me I've heard everything actually um like oh we're in JIRA so we're agile mm, <sighs> wow nope that's <laughs> nope we missed the mark on this one so um I, I'm working with a company right now that was um they've had a lot of miss information given to them and you feel bad right because they yeah. haven't been they've been guided down the wrong path so I'm trying to take the the peanut butter crumbs that they left and get them all back <laughs> good for you no they need leaders like that who can understand kind of where they're at and where they need to be <laughs> right like, yeah. listen we're go we're Hansel and Gretel here we're going to the wrong house we're going to the witch's house we need to go to the, over there to the candy house so yep um yeah so, um, okay, well, this is really, I mean, this is very innovative because, um, you know, I don't know, um, business agility is like a pretty hot topic right now too, and how um, organizations can leverage um, that kind of agility framework or mindset or whatever people want to refer to it as in like finance and legal. <laughs> and, and this is exactly what you did. Mm -hmm. you, you're not really developing coding anything. You took a process and you made it uh, a service. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's quicker, it's faster for them. They save, they save time and money getting it. So I, I see the value. They always see the value in it. It's, it's, it was setting up the, the legal framework around kind of like how, how my relationship works with the vendors and how I vet them and how, like all of that kind of thing I had to get started at the beginning and then now that's kind of it's, I, I have a process for for it and now I just kind of um, get approached or I approach different enterprises and their leaders and see how I can help yeah like, so how do you get your cases. business <laughs> so everybody wants to know right um, I think right now it's referrals and networking for sure um, okay. referrals have been huge because with chatbots and also, I also get a lot, I don't know about you, but I, when someone says like, oh, you're a tech consultant. Okay. So you must know a lot about machine learning and you must know a lot about um, AI and you must know a lot about VR and AR, right? They just kind of assume that there's this like <laughs> a big umbrella. <laughs> Actually, I get, oh, you're in tech. Can you tell me how to turn my computer on? Yep. I can do that for you. Power. <laughs> that power button yep a little one yeah yes. so people get this assumption. like when I talk to leaders they it's it's 
it's cute. Like it's naive and, at the, and it's fine because I understand like they're living in their sandbox, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where they're used to. And then when they have to, they're being pushed right now, especially with COVID, like digitally transforming has just been, you know, it's been around for 15 years, but I think in the past two years, it's just been, whew, everybody is on their strategic initiatives, but they just don't quite know how to approach it. So when we kind of bring a consult, when they bring a consultant in like myself, they're like, okay, well, what can we do? And they're looking at me for use cases. And I find that's where I add the most value is being like, well, look, we implemented so-and-so in your competitor. And so this has increased, you know, this score by X percentage. I can give them some stats and then it's enough for them to be like, we should do a POC, right? Like, let's see if this works in our environment. Let's see if our, you know, I just, we just did a, a chat bot for, um, a contact center for a large company. And we just did it um, for their internal employees to see if they could find their information quicker in their knowledge base with the chat bot versus just going to the search function. Give us kind of a background on what that chat bot, like what, like you say chat bot, I am thinking about my Mm -hmm. girlfriend up up in my bedroom, um, Alexa, right? (laughs) That's true. Right? So, so chat bots, in a nutshell, I think there's, I think there's a, a couple of, I don't know how to define it in the most quick way would just be, it's a conversational experience that uses um, artificial intelligence and some natural language processing. And it mimics conversations with real people in both written and voice. So <clears throat> you're right. A voice bot would be Siri. I don't want to say her name too loud because she's going to pop up. Oh, here. she can pop up. She's already recording. Us. She is here. <laughs> <laughs> All of the all of these wonderful women who are voice bots. Exactly. <laughs> <I'll classify>. um, <clears throat> these are voice bots, but they're all they're all a text underneath, right? And so there's two. There's kind of the informational chat bot, which is kind of simplistic type that you might have seen, you know, on a typical website that answers FAQs, you know, note news stories. You might see them on Facebook Messenger. These are the most basic. They follow kind of a decision tree like format, so a a customer comes has an intent and they take that intent and they just say oh okay it's going to be either yes or no and then they kind of go through this whole decision tree okay cool that's a great application I think it's great to start there but as I'm starting to see more and more use cases we kind of go into more of the transactional ones so chatbots are actually equipped with an NLP which is which is a natural language processing such as Google Dialogue Flow or IBM's Watson um, just depending on the use case and what the enterprise would like to use and what their infrastructure would like to use. Um, and then there's more um, transactional ones. So like, like I said, they're more integrated. They are smart. They are using NLP to kind of fund the whole conversation. And they're not just, just on decision trees. Um, and then I think the next evolution will be kind of an advisory type of chatbot, which are more self-learning. Um, then they're able to actually um, communicate with a lot more context is what we're starting to see. Oh boy. So variety. Yeah. Super basic to more complex, but the premise of a chat letter all the same, right? It's to make sure that the tasks, that arduous tasks that a lot of people need to do, we can just mimic with a chat bot. If it's like a constant question that they, that a FAQ that they get, why do they need to contact the contact center when you could just have a chat bot there to answer it, right? Gotcha. Yeah. All right. It's a very roundabout way of saying it. Sorry. No, <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. So, okay. So I, I went down another button trail. I'm sorry. Mm-mm, no so problem. You're telling us you use your networks, your referrals. Mm-hmm. Um, are, you, are you cold calling? You know what? At the beginning, okay, maybe I should premise this. My husband, 10 years ago, built his entire practice via cold calling. So I've seen cold calling at its finest and it does work. <laughs> so I have this bias that ch- I've, that cold calling does work. Um, so yes, I do employ it with my sales team to a certain extent. I think there's a time in the sales cycle that it makes sense. Um, and I don't know. At the, it's funny. At the beginning of COVID, I was like, okay, let's not cold call. I think people are inundated and they're all nervous and they're dealing with 
all the anxiety and stuff. So we stopped. But now actually I find cold calling works. People are actually, I don't know, in my case anyway, willing to pick up a little bit quicker than when they were working in their office. Oh, so yeah. the big question then, and I've asked a lot of people this in the last year is, has it affected your business or helped it? Oh, helped it immensely. COVID has? Oh yeah. <laughs> as soon as COVID in Canada hit, it was what, March? April was wild i think all of the airlines were going like there are so many different requests coming in from cancellations etc we had grocery stores approaching us because they wanted to in innovate and have a easy chatbot there so that people could um pick up their groceries or talk to them or book an appointment in etc so yeah it exploded <laughs> so we have heard that um I mean, that's the answer a lot of people, like nobody has yet said, no, it's, it's destroying my business. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, you oh talk to God. tech folks. <laughs> yeah, I do. And uh, they're like, no, pandemic's been great for us. Um, so that that's, I mean, yeah. sad, right? But on the other hand, it's great for people to recognize and understand that technology is you you have to be ahead of the game. Well, absolutely. And I think I to like point earlier, like on enterprises kind of being a little bit slow to kind of digitally transform. I think now they have a fire underneath mm -hmm. them and, and now they're all strategically <laughs> trying to digitally transform. And I think the top couple, of, um, um, I guess, what am I, I guess a, a couple, um, success measures that um, I guess, I think McKinsey did it a while ago on, you know, the, the success of a company you are digitally transforming. The number, the number two, I think, is offering, um, you know, programs and skills and, um, and the digital products to their employees to, to kind of, I guess, use technology to, to kind of advance their whole business. They got to start internally before they go externally. So offering digital tools to their employees with remote work, remote learning, remote working. Chatbots have been great for HR purposes rather than having to call your boss to book a vacation. You just talk to the chatbot on Slack and be like, hey, I need to book this off. Right? There's so many different conveniences that chatbots have offered. And I think businesses who are wanting to digitally transform are starting to recognize like, look, we've got to invest in innovative technologies or else we're going to be left behind. So it's that is very true. And that's um, on the other, on the flip side of for organizations, not only is that, but think of the talent that organizations oh, yeah. can <laughs> open their doors to when they're not so siloed to, you have to be in a chair in my office for eight hours a day. And oh, um, it's amazing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so excited for that. Just that you can work remote. Like, I've always been remote. I'm not sure if yourself as well or no. This is, no. <laughs> this is a new no. thing for you. Um, have you enjoyed it? You know what? I have. I have moments, girl. I have moments. So um, when my kids are in school, because my kids go to school full time, um, yeah, it's great. It's just me yeah. and the dog, and um, you know, my husband uh, works outside of the house. So, um, it's just, you know, it's me and the dog, just love and life. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there are the days when I still have to work, but yet there's no school because of say snow. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like, I become, you know, um, the, the teacher and mm -hmm the, the lunch lady. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, so yeah, those days I don't like so much. So those are the days I was like, damn, I wish I had an office I had to go to. So I didn't have to be here. So, but I, I have a one in high school and a third grader. And so like I say to my third grader, like, Oh, Jim today is shoveling the driveway. So get your snow pants on. Let's go. Yeah. So, you know, get on out there. <laughs> yep. So I tried to keep it real, real, you know, in line with, you know, Jim's yeah. active, right? So go out and shovel the driveway. Oh, 
So parents have had to be very innovative this year with keeping yes. kids busy. And I, I agree with you. Having kids at home has been challenging to say mm. the least. Um, one tip, I don't know. I, I, I've been renting out of a co-working space, I'd say for the past couple of years. And that has saved me because um, a couple of days a week, if the kids were at home, I'm like, you know, I kind of set them up and I would go to the co-working space for at least a few hours to kind of back if I had a couple meetings or something, for example, and I couldn't afford for them to barge in. <laughs> just, yes. disrupt. I have, I have <laughs> been to those same places yes. because they are your saving grace. So yes. now is, are you in the area that you're in, do your kids, are, is schools open? You know what? They just opened schools up on Monday, no, Tuesday. So literally what, yesterday, yeah, Today, yesterday, <laughs> oh, that's yes, on Tuesday. Sad. Yeah. So they've been closed, I think, what, since Christmas break. So in Toronto, which is where like, I'm, I'm just, we're just living at the cabin right now. Um, <clears throat> but in Toronto, they're open for a few months and then they closed for a month and a half and now they're open again. 2020, I kind of have chosen to kind of put it out of my brain because I think I have PTSD from I, that I, initial. Oh, yeah. Oof. Totally with you Oof. there. Whew, like April till June, that was just, that I was, wrote, actually didn't even make my kids go to school in June. It was more like April to May. I suffered. Like it was just like, <laughs> yeah, it was, fast. but yeah. And my business happened to be like exploding. So it was, it was just this balancing act of, mm -hmm. of, oh my God, of, of making it work. But, um, I'm, I feel like I'm more resilient because of it. That's what I tell myself. And <laughs> so are my kids. <laughs> yeah, see, exactly. Yeah. And you know what? I think like here you are, your business is exploding and yet there was this pressure. And I think mothers felt this pressure more because yep. there was like, oh my God, now I'm responsible for making sure this, you know, this kid passes this grade and gets on these Zoom calls with their teacher and complete, <clears throat> oh my God, if I have to look at one more snow day packet, my kids have had a lot of snow days. Um, I Like I literally want to do the snow day packet myself. Yeah. Like I can't do this anymore with you. So I'm just going to do it and you're going to turn it. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. <laughs> mentally, I can't do this anymore. So oh, yeah. You know, mothers have had to bear a link a lot. I think obviously dads have stepped in, but from, from like, my, my husband's been excellent. I can't complain, but I, I, it's still, you still feel the mental load of just everything, right? Yeah. The groceries, the picking up, the cleaning, the school, yeah. all of it. And all of my, you know, girlfriends, we get on wine chats, similar to this <laughs> kind of environment and vent yeah. about it. And it feels a little bit better that everybody I think is in the same boat. And, um, and you're cooking three course dinners. I mean, my God, <laughs> no. you know, go you there. got that pressure going. <laughs> no, no, what, scale that back. <laughs> meal, meal prepping has been a saving grace actually on the weekends for that. So I, okay, I feel like, you know, you I put a shepherd's pie in the fridge and like, guys, it's in there. You go. Like if I can't be at dinner, I have to work or something. Yeah. But it's been good. I think it's made me help also a lot, a lot, a lot time and be a little bit more aware of time blocking and things okay. like that with work. So trying to take the learnings from it and be as positive as possible. And like I said, COVID has been great for my business. And I think um, I have to be grateful for that. So just yeah. go with, with the flow. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That is right. So, all right. Well, um, when you're not being the successful, oh, wait, we wanna know what's your website? Oh yeah, it's uh, www.chatc.ai, and it's spelled C, chat at C H A T C, dot A I. A I. Okay, so C H A T C, dot A I. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, we always like to throw that out there, so if anybody's um, curious, but um, when you're not like you know being powerhouse woman um, in your business and you guys ski and you're cooking mm -hmm. these like seven course dinners. Um, what other activities do you do? Oh, how old are your kids? My kids are, I guess what, they're turning six and eight this year. Oh, so, so they're almost, young. They're young kids. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we are busy. So I am, um, 
I'm a quote unquote, we're from Canada. So we're a hockey family. Of course you are. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so we're that stereotype that you, <laughs> that you. So are these boys, girls, one of each? I have one of each. I, my son's okay. the oldest and my daughter's the youngest one. Um, so yeah, that's from, I guess, basically from October until almost April. That's our world. I want to okay. say uh, the okay. COVID, obviously it's been disrupted, but um, a lot of hockey. Um, I have a nephew who has played since he was like four years old. So, that's you know, their Michigan thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh, know. it's 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 a good community, though. I actually have to say that community has actually led into a lot of fun referrals because the hockey community is cr- pretty affluent. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not a cheap sport, and I I think um, that network that I've built, and because we you know, you, you're, you're outside freezing in a rink. It's not like you can just drop them off and say, see you later. Like it doesn't work like that. You're kind of outside waiting and you see these people four or five days a week and you develop great relationships. And I've developed a really good network that way. So I've a lot of great friendships. Um, yeah, we do hockey, we do skiing in the summertime. Um, I think we just bought this cabin actually in December. So I'm really, I, I'm really excited to spend the whole summer here at the lake. That's going to be my goal. <laughs> just to there boat and paddleboard. And I'm a, we're outdoor enthusiasts. So I, I love being outside. Well, that's good. Yeah. And when will it get warm that you can do that? May. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Ooh, I don't want to jinx it. Like I could say April, <laughs> but no, it, it, here it's going to take a little bit to warm up outside COVID. Obviously we love to travel. Um, mm. You know, I feel like it's been so long. I don't even remember what that's like anymore. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people do. No. <laughs> Enjoying tourism. No, but you know, know, we're the typical younger family just trying to, you know, be active and, and, you know, my husband and I both kind of run businesses. So those, we, we have a lot of cool business chats about that and growing them. So it's always fun. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. That is fun. So, okay. Well, typical, I can't say American family, but I'll say typical Canadian family. How about there? (laughs) There we go. All right. So what are the next steps for your business? Like what is, what's, you know, do you have like a strategic plan for the next few years or stay in the course? No, that's a good question. So as I, I think before I mentioned that a lot of, um, you know, leaders kind of look at me and like I said to you, kind of like, oh, you're a tech consultant. And they kind of group me into understanding everything. It also has opened me up to a lot of different opportunities too. So um, immersive technology has been something that I'm in the behind the scenes been working on. I've been vetting vendors and stuff for that for the past, I'd say six months. And so what is that? Um, So immersive technology would be virtual reality and augmented reality. Okay. And so um, I think there's so many really cool applications that um, small mid-sized businesses and enterprises can implement from a training perspective, from a market research perspective, from a branding exercise and trying to understand consumer insights. There's so many different ways, um, to use these technology to, I guess, transport the end user to a virtual world that can, um, kind of communicate it visually for them, even just rather than sitting through a boring Zoom PowerPoint, which we all have. In the past oh, yes. <laughs> year and a half, right? I think that's been about a year. Um, you know, why not? Why not imp- give all your employees a, a device and put them in a virtual reality room and be able to actually engage with them and teach them in a different way. So there's just been a lot of cool use cases. And so I'm kind of, that's kind of over the next couple of years, I kind of want to own and be that consultant for VR, AR and conversational AI. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's been a fun learning experience and I've get to interview a lot of great vendors and see what's happening out there and what type of innovation is, is going on. And it's very exciting. I'm, I love it. <laughs> yeah, there is some place, um, I interviewed someone and they um, literally are working with um, 
skilled trade people. Mm -hmm. And they have these glasses or goggles that they wear. And yeah. it the, the manual pops up on these goggles or yes. like out in front of them. Right. And they can yes. like flip through the pages and the air, it looks like they're like swatting away for lies or whatever, but um, they don't have to pull out a book and carry a manual and um, you know, like plumbers and electricians Absolutely. and those kind of people. So yeah, I really think that's going to be like the next right like absolutely <laughs> it is it's it's it, it's going to be for sure i'd say over the next five to ten years it's going to be highly adopted especially now like i don't know over christmas but so many of my friends got oculuses for christmas i think they purchased for their kids and for themselves yeah. and <clears throat> as those become more and more mainstream and the glasses like you said those are like i think lenovo is that released one they are so cool and powerful and what they're able to do for the user experience i i'm very excited like it's not just games right like i think right. enterprises can use this quite smartly to their advantage um for both their clients and employees so yeah it's just about finding to be honest like from the procurement standpoint is finding the right vendors who can do the job at gotcha. the skill level that's needed. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. And you've already started this process. I have. Yeah. I, again, that, that consulting job that I had X, you know, five, six years ago really opened me up to a lot of innovative companies out in the world. And, um, and I saw VR starting then it, it was, it was there, but it was, I don't know, a bit more further outreach. And now, <clears throat> Now with the goggles and and just all the games and all the augmented reality just on our phones, um, people are, are used to it and they enjoy it. And um, and so again, if people are using it in their personal life, then they're going to want to have it in their professional life. Right. 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 So yeah, it's so interesting. You, to it would be wonderful if companies did go this way because, um, like myself, I'm an I'm coaching right now for um, an organization and we're going to go into a concept called big room planning. It's mm -hmm. a safe concept. And uh, normally you're together all in one big room and to be able to recreate that virtually would be like phenomenal because, you know, we're all on zoom calls and then we all go into our little breakout rooms and zoom and then we come back and <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah. And it, how many people are multitasking during meetings, oh, right? <laughs> I mean, just just coming from coffee and doing this and that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's an excellent exercise for coaches and stuff. Absolutely, to kind of create these virtual rooms, so it's a lot more engaging and immersive, and it feels real. But you're still in the safety and comfort of your home. Right. Still sitting on your couch. I have to laugh though, because I, you know, everybody has their ear pods or whatever. And I'm like, I'm waiting for that person. Right. I have not come across it in the year. So maybe it won't happen. But that one person who forgets to hit the mute and goes into the bathroom. I'm just <laughs> waiting. Right. Cause you know, it's gotta happen. <laughs> <laughs> that mute button is like the most favorite button in the world. <laughs> and you know, people forget and they think they've hit mute, but then they haven't. And then I've had one person who um, thought they were on mute. They went in, got breakfast. We were on a breakfast meeting. They came in and you could hear them chewing. And you're like, how do you politely tell them like, stop chewing? We can hear you, I right? Hear your toast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm waiting for that one person that it'll be like, and I'm like, oh man, now that's going to be a good time on a Zoom meeting. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's been a lot of fun, fun little things that happen on Zoom meetings that are very yes. memorable, but, <laughs> yes. but I, I do think it will be here. Like as remote employees are going to be working remote and people are going to demand that. Right. I mm -hmm. think, yeah. employees. I mean, companies have to kind of adapt and, and go into different proof of concepts and see if this is a better option. And if it isn't a better option, that's okay. You don't have to invest 
a ton of extra money into it, but you have to at least try it, at least on a small user base and, and see what the reactions are. And that's, that's it. You got to listen to your clients and you got to listen to your employees. And there you go. That's great advice. Yep. All right, girls. So if somebody reaches out to you on your website, they, is there a contact us or a... Yes, absolutely. Okay. There's a pop-up there. You can kind of go through it. I think I'm using a tool from Hotjar. Um, you can go in there or you can also go on a contact us. My Calendly is booked into that. So you can book any time. Um, yeah. And if you, Hey, if you even want to discuss a virtual reality option, let me know. <clears throat> of course. You can talk offline. Absolutely. We'll talk offline. <laughs> we will. Lots of fun opportunities. All right. Perfect. Well, girl, you go and have dinner with your family. Um, you. They're probably waiting for their filet mignons. <laughs> um, Wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are having hot dogs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with hot dogs. <laughs> one's actually at practice and the other one's getting ready for practice. So um, <clears throat> I said, Active. you know, I said, pick the child up some food on your way home because I'm not going to be here. So, and my husband's like, yeah, I'm not cooking. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> no, you do you. Just yep. get what makes it work. Yep. Yep. Just yep. make sure you eat your battle. That's all I <laughs> that's, care about. That's it. Just eat. <laughs> yes. It was honestly such a pleasure speaking with you today. It was, it was a great chat. Thank you so much for it having was. me. You're so much fun. And um, I hope you survive the winter and let's keep in touch. And, Absolutely. Um, have, have a good evening. Thank you so much for your time. Not a problem at all. It was a pleasure.